Then it's simple right. gameplay feedback. Hey, hi, my name is Dennis, and I am an uh, indie game developer specialized in Unreal Engine. I don't know any programming, I do everything in Blueprint, and that's what I'm going to do today. I know that most people are probably using Unity or the Game Maker, especially for game jams, but you know, this, the focus of this workshop is not going to be like, um, you know, about Unreal Engine itself, just about um, giving you some ideas on like game patterns that you can use in order to kind of like enhance your game to um, specifically to add feedback to when something is happening so that the player has a um, better idea of what's going on and what he needs to do in the game in order to progress. Um, okay, so we have a kind of like a simple bas basketball game here. You can pick up like this is basketball, I guess. <laughs> Dunk it in the thing. So, <laughs> all right. Um, well, <laughs> Could be good, I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's 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 make this better. So, one problem that probably were will will show up, you know, the first time somebody's playing it, it's like the the person probably will have no idea, like he can pick up the ball. Is there nothing telling him? And so let's do that. So, first off, um, so these basketballs have a material, and I would like because the way it is programmed is that um, there's a the collision box that when it's overlapping with the basketball, uh, you know, and the player presses E, then you know he will pick it up. So I want to have something um, that highlights the basketball that you know you are now close enough in order to pick it up. So what we're going to do, we give it like a Fresnel effect, which um, Fresnel. Uh, I don't want to get into the details of the mathematics, but it creates like a outline effect around the edges uh, where it where the surface is curving away from the camera. And what we also need is a parameter to, in order to turn it on and off. So, you know, it's off and when the player gets close to it, it should be like this now. Um, the fold should be this, okay, and here's a player character, and you can see this is the, the, the kind of like the hitbox that's detecting if something is nearby, and it's here. You can see, like, uh, here's the begin overlap. Um, check if, if the thing, the actor that he's overlapping is actually the basketball. What you now do is you give the basketball a dynamic material <coughs> so we can edit it. So now we tell, you know, we tell the ball, okay, you are um, in our range. So let me get your material and we're going to set your parameter, your highlight to one. So hopefully you can now when you're getting close to the ball, it will like bright up in this, this Fresnel effect. And the player will know, hey, uh, you can probably do something with it. Okay, now it stays like that, so maybe when the overlap ends, we do like the same thing.
Hold on. Alright, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> well, you don't have much time to to go debugging, but um, you just just continue. Okay, so you pick it up, and maybe what would be cool, maybe like a little sound effect that plays, so we know that you know something happened when we pressed E. So this is our like grab command, and the ball is literally like teleporting, you know, to into our hands. So let's say we play a sound. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do <laughs> is um, so it kind of looks weird when you're when we're dunking the ball into the basket. Kind of we're like the ball just disappears and uh, we're like floating inside. Um, so the basket itself is also a class and what would be cool is maybe like uh, give an indication that something landed into the ba basket. So maybe like a little animation. And on you have like these uh, timelines. Um, so you, you can see, uh, you know, when the basketball is overlapping with like the hitbox, uh, this uh, sear, uh, the, the, the capsule of the basket, you know, something should happen. In this case, he, uh, it destroys the basketball. And while he's doing that, maybe we give like the basket like, a little animation. So in the timeline, it's basically a uh, node that fires a tick for a set amount of time. In this case, um, I'm gonna say like for, eh, that's 30 milliseconds. And what I wanna do is I want to give like the uh, basketball like kind of like, ex like scaling effect. So like it looks like something landed inside of it. So this is gonna be our scale and then I set the value, you know, Gonna be one. Two. Oh, Jesus. So what should happen now is that. <coughs> So you know when the basketball is overlapping with the hitbox, it fires like the timeline, and the timeline has like this curve, which should like expand the, the basket for like a short amount of time, making it look like something landed inside of it. So let's try to test this. Okay. Um, so maybe also would be cool to add a sound effect to that. So maybe something very positive, so the player knows, hey, I, I did something good. Um, so what I have prepared is a couple of sound effects, um, like this. Great. And how about we? we... <laughs> um, there are a couple one of these because I, I couldn't decide which one of them. So what I'm gonna do is a. Randomizer, like an Unreal Engine, you have like these sound cues. I'm probably sure there's something similar like that in Unity 2. When you're using a couple of sound effects, it will randomly choose one of those three. And there's like this option here, um, randomizer without a re uh, replacement. So it always chooses something that hasn't played yet. So when I try to test that one out. Wow, great golly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we take a great cue. Golly! <laughs> <laughs> Knew it! 
Um, so feedback is not only like something visual or uh, you know something you can do with, <laughs> with sound. You can also do it like uh, influencing the movement of the player itself. So what I want to try to do now is that as soon as the player dunks the ball into the basket, he should like stop and maybe like hang onto the thing for a couple of seconds. So maybe get like the um, player controller and the pawn that the player is controlling right now. Pawn and then like for the duration. Gonna tell them uh, get the character controller, get the movement. I'm gonna tell them for a yeah. Right. I think like should be enough if I tell it like for like the uh, 30 milliseconds where this timeline is playing. During that time, the velocity should be down to zero for the player. So. He should like stop at this spot for a couple of seconds, uh, well, shorter amount of time, and then drop down. Wow. Yeah, there we go. So it already looks a little bit better. Try this again. Wow. Um, okay, we get like four minutes left, so maybe uh, try to do a short particle effect. Uh, because I want to do like some kind of like confetti effect every time the player dunks the ball in. So, uh... Okay. Um... First of all, we need a material that we can edit you know, through the um, particle editor. Give it the uh, particle color, there we go. Um, the thing should be translucent and unlit. And I plug in the alpha value to the opacity. So we're now back into the particle editor. And maybe I give it a background different color. Okay, there we go. I guess the shader needs to be compiled first. Um, oh yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. Like you can see, like already, like the the things are disappearing because that's what the uh, color of a life is doing. Now it's saying, okay, the alpha value, you know, at the end of the lifetime of the particle, it should go down to zero, so it's like disappearing. Okay, the um, particles right now are spawning constantly, but what I like to have is more like a fact where it's like exploding in one burst. So I'm going to say, okay, the constant spawn, uh, deactivate that. We're going to use one burst. I'm going to say uh, there should be like a hundred of them spawning at once. We can't see it right now because they are all spawning like at the same location all at once, and they are the same size. So we give it a randomization. And we're gonna say, okay, um, I want to want you to spawn kind of like in a sphere where you like it's expand like an explosion. So we go under uh, location module sphere. And this looks kind of better. <coughs> um, gonna add velocity to it so they start expanding from the core of the sphere. Gonna make the sphere a little bit smaller, I think, and add more to the velocity. Make these things smaller. Okay, um, maybe some more. And let's give them some color. So, uh, I don't, well, those were the 15 minutes. There's a lot more you can do, but... Golly! Golly! Okay, thank you.